Okay, so what I'd like to do here is I'd like to talk a little bit more about um, Coulomb's Law um, than I had time to talk about in class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an idealized version of Coulomb's actual experiment and try to get some, uh, s some solution out of that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put together something that looks fairly similar uh, to what we did in class. Um, instead of having a regular string, or spring, excuse me, we'll have a um, torsion spring. Um, and that's going to look sort of like that. I probably should have only done one loop, but there it is. And at the end of that torsion spring, we have a um, charged particle here. Um, now we're going to move that charged particle uh, with another charged particle um, here. Okay. Um, so this is going to be particle zero. This is going to be particle one. Um, this is going to be some distance from here, and we're going to from the center of the spring. Um, we're going to move. We're going to pretend like we're moving this distance to cause a change in this angle here, theta. Um, and if there was no electrostatic force, we'd say that this angle here, theta zero, is would be um, the equilibrium position of this thing. So that's where we're pulling the um, spring from. Um, and this distance here from here to here is going to be some um, fixed constant. We just have the charge at the end of the rod connected to the torsion spring, and we move this charge around over here. Um, say one of these is negative and one of these is positive. It doesn't really matter which. So that is what we're going to use as a setup. Uh, what I'd like to do with that setup, right, is to go ahead and um, figure out what exactly it is I have. Now, I just told you what we have. I just want to um, list everything out before we start any work. So this was the representation setup on your homework. Um, so we're going to do our identification part. Right? Remember, that's part of our, um, it's part of our rubric for the, for the homework. So now we have um, these two beads of opposite charge. All right. And if we have two beads of opposite charge, um, we have uh, the charge on um, bead zero. Um, so that's this one here. So that's positive, so that's Q0 is equal to um, plus Q. I don't really need the plus sign, but why not? And then we can do the same thing for bead 1. This guy, which we said was negative. So Q1 is equal to minus Q. All right, and then these are mounted on, or uh, the moving, or this, the response one is mounted on this rod. Um, so one is mounted on a rod. All right. Um, slash spring combination. Okay, so um, so the rod has a length for the rod is, uh, we'll call it, um, I'm not sure, let's, I, I probably am going to call it R, that's fine. Um, this has a spring stiffness, right? And spring has an R in it. It usually has an R in it, at any rate. All right, spring stiffness. 
uh, and we'll call that one kappa um, to distinguish it a little bit from the K that we'd use if it was a normal string or spring, excuse me. Um, next, we've got a um, equilibrium orientation. And we'll just call that theta zero, okay? Um, and finally, the other moves um, horizontally. Um, the other has a set distance. Uh, from the center. So that is going to be um, distance D. And this we're going to call a small angle. Um, it's going to take a while for it to matter, but to make this um, tractable and simple and something that is actually use useful to you, um, probably I'm going to want to uh, just look at things in a um, linear uh, approximation. So if this, is, if this is small, then this is small. So if this angle is small, then this angle also has to be small. Their difference, we can't, we're, we do have to worry about their difference, but, we, but the um, angle here um, we're okay with. Um, it will let us approximate sine functions. So, now what we want to do is we want to find something, right? So what do we want to find? Uh, we want to find out what this angle actually is. So as we bring this closer, how does that angle change? You know, this guy gets closer, this guy gets closer in this way. We know that we, we want to actually make some um, quantitative predictions. Um, so we want the equilibrium angle. Um, there. I, yeah. Okay, so where do we want to go from here? Um, so if this were a type B problem, if this were any sort of problem that, that I've given you, uh, you have to do this part, right? If it's a type B problem, I don't ask you for the concept. Um, but if it were a type C problem, I would. I'd say, well, what is the concept behind this? And the concept is going to be Coulomb's Law. Uh, no surprise, because I'm trying to do something with um, Coulomb's experiment. So uh, this, these two are good for A, or these two you need for A, B, uh, C, and D. Uh, this one just for C and D. Um, let's see, where else do we go now? Um, for B and, C, B and C problems, and I think A2 probably, um, we need a setup, okay? So we have to say, okay, what's going on here? Um, let's choose some axes and things along those lines. So um, that also requires us to put together a drawing of that setup. Now, this is very, very sim similar. Um, one thing that we don't have here is axes, right? So I just drew things. It looks like I probably should have an x-axis there and a y-axis there, okay? Um, on top of that, in this drawing, I don't want to include these sort of physical gobbled this physical gobbledygook stuff, right? Um, all I want to do is geometrically um, place objects that are going to be moving. Um, so, so then I just say, okay, well, here then is charge zero, right? And that is um, the vector x zero. And I will put in here, this is our equilibrium line. Um, on top of that, we need our vector x1, which is going to come here to our charge one, our charge particle number one. Um, and we're going to care about our vector from 
from here, from our source to zero, which is uh, our field point, or we don't, we haven't covered fields yet, but this this is the um, this is the object that's being acted upon. So our zero one from one to zero. Okay. So that that's what we're doing here, and I want this also in words. Okay. So we're going to say, um, you know, place source charge on the x-axis. Uh, place um, equilibrium line um, at theta zero uh, counterclockwise, right? Uh, and place final um, final position. at theta counterclockwise. So we've done that. Um, and for type B problems only, and for all type B problems, whether or not you actually think you're going to use the vectors, I'd want you to write out the vectors. Okay. And the reason why I want you to write out the vectors is because I want you to have that practice. Um, I want you to know what you're doing with the vectors. Uh, we want to start early and just keep on doing it because when we get into the second semester and we're getting the really complicated problems, if you're not good with the vectors still, you're not going to go anywhere. So we really, really, really need to practice these vectors. Um, so uh, we've got two vectors, right, that we really care about. Well, actually three. So we have this one. Uh, this one and their difference. Um, these two are the ones I want for these vectors. This one is part of the solution. Okay. Um, yes, I know you can write it off the top of your head, or hopefully you can write it off the top of your head, but I want you to go through and show me how you're doing that. Okay. So we want the vector for our source charge. Okay. And the vector for our source charge we said is x1. This one is extremely easy. It's d in the x hat direction. That's it, right? And then we also have, on top of our source charges, um, we have our uh, uh, moving uh, our moving charge. All right. Now that guy is moving around on this um, circle, right? From the y-axis to the x-axis. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It's moving from y to x along a circle. So what we want to do is we want to write that as a circle. Um, and we want to get this angle theta in there, so it's going to be pretty good. Just a, the simplest of trigonometry trigonometry, r cosine theta in the x hat direction plus r sine theta in the y hat direction. Easy. No problems. You, you know it. It's, it's not something that's going to come back to haunt you. Um, so that's most of the setup. Um, all we have to do now is put together a strategy. Okay? What's our strategy? So first, um, uh, I think what we're going to want to do is we want to find um, the distance or the displacement, let's say, right, from, from the source to the object, all right? We want to find R01. We're going to need that guy. Uh, two. What we're probably going to want to do is we're going to want to actually find the force um, on zero 
from 1. Okay, and that's something like F01. Okay. Uh, 3. 3. Uh, the force isn't going to be enough. Actually, what we're doing is we're, we're moving this around uh, this way, right? Moving it um, on this circle. The angle is changing. Um, distan the distance is only changing as the angle changes. What we really care about here is the torque um, because we're ca we care about these angular, angular variables. Remember from physics 2, the torque is to um, the force as um, the angle is to the position, right? And the angular momentum is to the um, uh, momentum and the angular speed is to the speed so we want to find the torque instead now that's good um, that means I get to show you the torque early on well uh, we're going to use torque later on it's important especially in magnetism um, and we'll use n01 now I don't recall off the top of my head what what letter this book uses for um, for the torque, but for last semester's book, we used N, so I'm just going to stay with that. Um, uh, for, we'll use the small angle approximation. So that means that um, theta zero is much less than pi over two. Okay, that's basically how we're going to approximate it. And um, five, uh, find the spring torque. Okay, and that's an S, let's say. Uh, that'll, that'll be extremely simple. And six, um, balance it all out. So balance the torques, set them equal to zero and solve, and we're good. All right, so that's the first half. Um, and I think, I think that's a good start. I'll go ahead and take a picture of this and I'll try to put it up somewhere so that in the second half, we can um, we can look at you can look at this. You can just load it up in your web browser or something if you need to look at this, because um, I'm going to have to give you another page for the actual um, mathematics. So if you love, I mean really love, are completely in love with algebra, I know that you're ready for this next part. I'll see you in just a moment.